Modernizing mainframe applications can be a challenging task. AWS Transform for Mainframe is here to revolutionize the way you approach this journey. AWS Transform for Mainframe is the first agentic AI service for modernizing mainframe workloads at scale. You can automate the entire transformation process, from initial analysis and planning to code refactoring and migration. Reduce mainframe modernization timelines from years to months. Refactor millions of lines of COBOL code to Java in minutes. And generate migration wave sequence plans, based on your business priorities, in minutes. AWS Transform provides an autonomous objective-driven approach to application modernization, allowing you to define high-level goals and have AWS Transform orchestrate the necessary tools and human actions to analyze, document, decompose, plan, refactor, and deploy mainframe applications. Before interacting with AWS Transform for Mainframe, you prepare your mainframe application code, including your COBOL source code, JCLs, BMS screens, and DB2 schemas in an S3 bucket. Then you begin your modernization journey with AWS Transform for Mainframe through the web interface. To get started, I have already created a workspace. You can create a new workspace by clicking Create Workspace button. You have an option to rename this workspace as well. Let's call it the Mainframe Modernization Workspace. Now let's hit the Create a Job button. I have asked AWS Transform to create a new job. It gives you option to select the kind of migration that you want to perform, like Migration Assessment, .NET, VMware, and Mainframe Modernization. Let's select Mainframe Modernization. The Mainframe Modernization job will prompt you to choose the goals that you want to achieve. It provides you with a couple of objectives that you can start with. Option 1 includes analyze code, generate technical documentation, decompose code, plan migration sequence, and transform code to Java, followed by option 2, which is for analyze code and extract business logic. In this case, let's ask AWS Transform to use a comprehensive mainframe modernization objective with all the above goals. AWS Transform will suggest you to review and confirm the job type, job name, and the objective. Let's change the job name to Comprehensive Mainframe Modernization. Once you're good with the job type, job name, and objectives, you can confirm and ask AWS Transform to create a job. It is now confirmed all the job details. Let's click Create Job. AWS Transform for Mainframe will understand your request and propose a plan for your migration. It has created a plan for you with all the goals that you have specified in the previous steps. As a first step, let's connect to the AWS account where your mainframe source code is located and provide the AWS account ID. Click Next, and you will also need to specify the S3 bucket ARN where the mainframe code is located. It will create a connector for the S3. You need to ensure you give AWS Transform for mainframe access to the S3 bucket to start the mainframe modernization job. Now copy the verification link and open it in a browser to approve AWS Transform for mainframe to access the resources. Once that is done, go back and hit the Send to AWS Transform button. The modernization exercise will now kick off. The next step is to specify the actual location of the code. In this demo, we have bundled up all the source code into a mainframe app folder. And I'll provide the location here and send it to AWS Transform. Once this is done, it will start the analysis of the job. AWS Transform has completed the analysis of the code. In all files view, it created detailed analysis, views, including the complete list of classified files with a number of lines of code and the cyclomatic complexity of each file. You can also view by file types or file folders. In the missing files view, it shows the missing files based on the dependency analysis. If you hover over to the next section for identically named, you can view identically named files and compare them from the web interface itself. Finally. Duplicated IDs shows the COBOL files with duplicated program IDs in the identification division of the COBOL program.
I'll accept these results and send it to AWS Transform. At this point, you can also come to the dashboard to see your overall dashboard. In this case, the Analyze Code section will show you how many lines of code for each type of file and what percentage of each file type is covered in this analysis. Once analysis is complete, it will automatically start the documentation generation phase. Documentation generation phase requires user inputs to continue. You will need to select the files for which you would want the documentation to be generated. As you can see, there are two levels of documentation, a summary label which gives you a high-level overview, and a detail level with comprehensive documentation. Let's select a few files here to show how documentation is generated. Now that we have selected the files, let's click on Detailed Functional Specifications for this documentation and send it to AWS Transform. AWS Transform has generated the documentation. Let's review the results. The generated documentation can be viewed from the AWS Transform's web interface itself. You can also download it on an XML, PDF, or both formats. The generated documentation is also stored in an output folder inside the same S3 bucket that contains your source code. Let's go to the bucket and download the generated documents. Here is the downloaded document. We have COBOL code and JCL code, which are the files I selected for documentation. Let's start with the cover page first. The cover page gives you a summary of what this application does, the files chosen for documentation, and a one-line summary. Let's review the COBOL documentation now. It provides high-level overview of this program, program logic and functionality, the data flow and data dependencies, data information, and more. At this stage, AWS Transform has also completed ingesting the documentation into Amazon Bedrock Knowledge Base. Let's open the chat window and ask some questions. Let's ask another question. The next step is to extract business logic. AWS Transform automatically analyzes your code to identify and document the critical business elements, including detailed process flows, entry point analysis, and the business rules which are embedded within your application. Let's select one program and send it to AWS Transform. Business logic is now extracted and ready for review. In the summary section, you can find the business summary, including environment details and key functionalities. In the next section, you can see the key matrices that has been extracted from the code analysis. The flow diagram and functional rules section generates human readable flowcharts showing the business process diagrams. And then the extracted business rules are listed along with the supporting COBOL section. The document generation step is complete. Let's proceed with the code decomposition step. For code decomposition, AWS Transform needs user inputs to create logical domains for your project. Let's create a few business domains that are logical for this project. The decomposition task is critical to break down the large mainframe monoliths into smaller manageable domain modules that can be modernized one after another in waves. Let's start by creating these domains. Click Action and Create Domain. Let me create an account domain. I'm selecting one file here and making it as a seed file. Seed files are the semantic input fed to the domain. AWS Transform will use these seeds to construct domain, including all the related components for that domain creation. Let's create a couple of more domains. You can configure your domains in the Configure Decomposition section. 
Let's accept the configuration that has been provided by AWS Transform. And hit the Decompose button. The decomposition step is now complete. Let's review the results. AWS Transform has decomposed the application. You can view the number of lines of code and files associated with each of these domains. In the dependency view, you can also view the graph of how the dependencies are mapped. On the domain view, you can see how these domains are created and mapped to each other. Let's accept these results and send it to AWS Transform. The next step is to plan migration waves. This step is about how to migrate or transform these domains into waves. Let's review the recommendations provided by AWS Transform. It has recommended to migrate common component domain first, followed by the user domain, account domain, transaction domain, and unassigned domain. You can see a chart view of how many lines of code and files need to be migrated in what waves. We have option to change this recommendation as needed. You can add preferences and change the numbers or the sequence in which you want to modernize this application. Let's accept this recommendation, approve and send it to AWS Transform. The next step is refactoring. We need to select the domains that we want to refactor. In this exercise, let's select all the domains. Here you can update configurations such as refactor engine version, project name, root package, target database, etc. Let's accept the options provided by AWS Transform and send it to for refactoring. The code refactoring process is now complete. Let's view the results. The legacy code is now refactored to Java and its latest frameworks. We can view the successful status of the transformation here. Let's review the complete results. Click on the link to download the code. The downloaded code is now open in an integrated development environment. AWS Transform has decomposed the application into multiple domains. Let's dive into the account domain. The palm file contains all the dependencies. Moving on to the entity project, it contains the business model and the context elements. Typically for a given legacy COBOL program, this corresponds to the modernization of IO section and the data division. The service project contains the modernized business logic, typically the procedure division of a COBOL program. The tools project contains shared common tools and utilities that are used by the other projects. And in the web project, you can find the Angular Frameworks code of the converted application UI. You can also ask AWS Transform to provide the infrastructure as code templates for creating modernized application environments. Let's ask it through the AWS Transform chat interface. You can download the templates based on your preference from here. Now that you have completed the transformation, you can perform an optional step called Reforge. Reforge is a new feature added in May 2025 that improves the readability of your transformed code by using large language models. First, we completely restructured the code architecture to create a more intuitive flow. This makes it significantly easier for developers to navigate and understand the system's logic. We then focused on implementing proper Java idioms throughout the code base. This ensures our code feels natural and follows established best practices that Java developers expect. One of our key achievements was enhancing the overall readability of the code. Through careful refactoring, we've made the code much clearer and more self-documenting. With long-term maintenance in mind, we optimized the output quality. This means future teams will spend less time deciphering and more time building. Finally, we added comprehensive comments throughout the code. These aren't just basic annotations. They're detailed, human-readable explanations that help developers understand not just what the code does, but why it does it. Let's begin. We'll start by asking Amazon Q to create a new job. AWS Transform provides some options for jobs that can be completed. In this case, we will choose mainframe and an objective of reforge the code. AWS Transform examines my requests and asks for confirmation of the new job, which I provide as the human in the loop. The new job is created with the appropriate steps.
Each reforged job needs a buildable project that has been refactored using AWS Transform available in an S3 bucket. In addition, an input Java class list is provided which specifies which service classes you would like to reforge. Enter the S3 bucket containing the buildable project that has been refactored and stored as a zip file. For the list of classes, provide the classes list to be reforged. As an example, my text file contains the class com.awscarddemo.kbact 01c.service.mplay.mpl.tpact 01c process empl. Select Continue for AWS Transform to submit the request. AWS Transform has accepted my request. I'm going to pause briefly as this may take a few minutes. The work log can be checked to determine progress. Once completed, you can find the results in the S3 bucket to be downloaded. Using the link provided, you will find the S3 bucket containing your reforged code. In addition, there will be status files and log files provided. Now let's review the reforged code to determine the improvements made. The screenshot shows a batch program side by side. On the left is the original transform code, and on the right is the reforged code. The refactored version on the right is more developer-friendly and easier to understand for Java programmers. It provides better readability and makes the code's intention more transparent. Scores have been improved. The code structure and organization, the code readability and comprehension scores have gone up. The technical quality has gone up, and overall, it is more sustainable and maintainable. I hope you enjoyed this demo on AWS Transform for Mainframe, an agentic AI service for modernizing mainframe workloads at scale. Thank you.